It's a blessing to be with you here today on this Wednesday, and today I'd like to look at the attitude of the Apostle Paul. He was a man that went through much for the sake of the gospel, and he's heading back to Jerusalem, and on the way he's been very clearly told by the Holy Spirit uh, that he was going to face some persecution and troubles there in Jerusalem. And as he's in this time of final talking to the Ephesian elders before he leaves, he says uh, to them, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received the Lord of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. This is Acts chapter 20, verse 24. The verse previous says that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But he said, this doesn't move me. Now you look at that, and that's pretty extraordinary. He realizes he's got huge difficulties ahead, but he knows God's leading, and he's working. And even in the midst of all of these problems, he has a focused goal, and that is to finish the course that God has given him with joy, to do all that he was uh, planned to do by the Lord, all that has been set out for him by uh, God himself in his ministry. He wants to finish all of that, and he wants to do it with a heart of trust and joy. Now, I bring this up because I think one of the things that will encourage us more than anything is to have a real purpose in our life. If we are most of the time just looking out for ourselves, certainly burdened for the things of God, but really we're concerned about our home and our family, and we should be, of course. We're concerned about other details of our life and our job, and we give some time to the Lord. Well, we're going to be thrown when the things that we are attending to most of the time are threatened. But if our goal, if our love, our passion, that which we are focused on the most is the work that God has led us to do and the desire to please him, then all these other things will not be that important to us uh, as they might be otherwise. Now, the question often comes with Christians, well, what really is my ministry? Well, let me just say, first of all, to know your spiritual gifting and your work within the local church, get involved in the Great Commission with all of your heart. Every one of us are to see people saved. Every one of us are to disciple them. Every one of, the, of us are to bring these disciples into an association with the local church, that covenant and commitment and baptism is a key part. And then they are to be taught everything in the Word of God. That's a major purpose in all of our lives. And as we serve the Lord that way, our spiritual gifting becomes evident to the leadership of a good local church. And that local church will begin to make room for your gifting as you are serving under the power of the Holy Spirit in the work of the Great Commission. The problem that we have is not being given to the Great Commission we do not really have a long-term goal for what our life is. Now, we expect a pastor to have that, and a missionary, and an evangelist, and a Christian school teacher, but my friend, you're just as important as any of those categories. God has a very clear purpose, and he'll reveal it to you, and he'll take you step by step uh, toward the aspect of ministry that he has for you. And my friend, if you get committed to that ministry, then the circumstances will not throw you. He had the great joy of thinking of finishing that which God had given him to do. And I think it's vital for Christians today to have very clear focus when it comes to their life and eternity and serving the Lord. May God help us all have that kind of heart for ministry.